Do it. Hey guys, this is Versatile from Proud of Phoenix Media. In today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up your jailbroken PS3. Maybe you did it through E3 Flasher, PS3 Exploit, or maybe you just got one off of eBay or from a friend or wherever, and you want to install new apps or you don't know what to do, and you want to set it up so you can maximize your PS3 potential. So I'll show you my process of what I like to do and what apps I like to enjoy and use. So a great website to be familiar with is store.browgy.com. If you go to the homebrew section, this is where you can download certain programs that you like. And after you download these programs, they're going to be like a package file or a .pkg file. So what you want to do is take those files and put it on the root of a USB thumb drive or external hard drive already formatted as FAT32. So here's an example of my flash drive here. I have all these different package files that I like to install on my jailbroken consoles. And we'll go through the video and, and explain what each of these different programs are. So this is just some examples of what I like to use. You may want to use some others. Uh, so go ahead, take a look at the store.browgy.com and check it out. So with that said, let's jump straight into the next portion of this video tutorial where I'm going to show you my PS3 setup and how to install all these different programs. Um, one thing you do want to do is after you eject your USB thumb drive, plug into the rightmost USB port on your PS3 and then Rebug, for example, will be able to see it and we'll be able to install programs from the package file manager. So with that said, let's go ahead and do this. All right, so here we are at my PS3, so let's do this. So I'm going to do a, a narration over some video content I already pre-recorded. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to go to package manager, install package files, and if you haven't done so already, go ahead and install Rebug Toolbox. It's a good program to use. And I'm going to go into Rebug Toolbox, show you my system information, uh, that's some basic stuff there. I haven't converted to DEX just yet. Here are some various uh, settings that I have enabled on my particular console. So you might want to go ahead and follow suit as well. Toggle QA flag, I have that enabled. So if you ever do want to downgrade your custom firmware, it won't break your system or cause any issues. So once that's done, let's go back to the main menu here. And then what we're going to do is install some more package files. So as I stated earlier in today's video tutorial, make sure your USB thumb drive is plugged in the rightmost USB port. Although I do believe your port is broken, um, Rebug should be able to see your thumb drive is plugged in another USB port. So here I am going through and installing various programs to my PS3. A lot of them are related to programs related to... Um, spoofing the system, file managers, um, there's a control console program that's helpful if you are like if you like to do modding like Call of Duty and, and the other similar games. Um, there's a RetroArch, there's a Multiman which is a great backup manager. There's also a React PSN that I also install which is used to help activate what is called wrap license files. It's also used to help with PS2 emulation as well. And then there's also RetroArch that I install near the end of this segment, which is a nice program to use for um, playing old school ROM games on your PS3. So really it depends on what kind of program you like to use. Like I said, go to store.browgy.com and there's a lot of different programs that you can check out. But the ones that I am installing right now, these are what I think are quote unquote popular ones, at least I like to use. Um, so every time I set up a jailbroken PS3, this is the same process that I go through, which is installing various package um, files to my uh, PS3 that I like to use and my friends like to use and so on and so forth. So RetroArch here, this takes the longest to install only because it's the largest package file. So if you're not into retro gaming, by all means, go ahead and skip this. And you don't have to install it. Once all the package files are installed, a neat way to organize your files is when you go back to them, press square, and it'll dump it in the folder, which we'll see in a second here. So that's pretty cool. So since I installed Control Console, I'm going to go ahead and run it. It's going to install itself, basically, and it's going to run as a service after the PS3 reboots. So if you're into Call of Duty modding, you can use uh, different apps to inject into the PS3 in real time, depending on the mod menu in question. Or you can later on, you can get mod menus that don't require a control console that are self-hosted on the PS3. The next step that I'm doing right here is I'm creating a user called double A or AA in lowercase. And I'm gonna log into this user account and use that to run the React PSN program. And that will activate that particular account. And I talk in more details in the previous video tutorial. You ever see my PS2 
tutorial on PS3. We talked about the React PSN in more detail. But uh, basically what happens is after you run it, it's going to reboot. And then you'll see that your username has changed from AA to a brand new React PSN kind of username. So we'll see that in a second here. Yep, there it is. So what we're going to do now is go back to user one. I'll show you where some of the apps are pre-installed on the console. So here we have Movian, which is under TV video sources, right? And then under game, you'll see all the different apps that I've talked about earlier. So go through it one more time. Rebug toolbox, pretty standard. This is a file manager. It's pretty cool. PS Ninja used for spoofing the system. Control console used for modding apps, uh, games. Multiman is a backup manager. PSN patch also used for spoofing. React PSN just went through that. And then RetroArch for old school gaming. So let's go ahead and run through Multiman. This is a popular program used for, um, you can create backups of games. You can load backups of games. You can use to organize your retro game library as well. When you launch a program for the first time, there's going to be these different questions that you have to answer. Just say yes to all of those guys. And then after a while, it's going to boot into uh, Multiman. When you do install the program for the first time, there's going to be some kind of theme audio. Uh, to be honest, I personally am not a fan of it. So the very first thing I like to do once I log into the program is to disable that theme audio. I'm sure you, there's probably a way to change it to a song of your choice. But most of the time, I don't hang out in Multiman that long to really enjoy the music. So I just turn it off. Um, I do have my external hard drive connected to my PS3. So later on, you'll see um, when you have your PS3 hard drive set up properly with games, it'll show up in Multiman as well. And then from there, you can copy games, transfer games from external to internal, things like that. It's pretty cool. So let's go ahead. Let's disable that theme audio. You basically go to settings, scroll all the way down to theme audio. Once you find it, go ahead and disable it. Okay, very cool. Now we go over ahead to the game section. I'm just going to go ahead and pick a random game and press triangle and then go to copy. And you can tell it where do you want to copy to. So I want to copy to my internal hard drive and that's how you do it. Or you have a disk. You can also copy the disk to your internal or external hard drive as well. So that's today's video tutorial in a nutshell. You guys have any nitpicky questions? Leave a comment here on the YouTube page and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.